In this video, I'm stupid enough to pick a fight with one of the most competent diorama builders on YouTube to see who can build the best epic diorama using the contents of the Mega Minis box and literal trash. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. This video is gonna be pretty garbage and a little bit trashy. <laughs> Get on with it. I'm doing a collab with Neil from Real Terrain Hobbies. In the ultimate face-off of who can build the best diorama using only trash in the Mega Minis box and who's got the best trash tour. Yulvia has been. Oh, that was really good. <laughs> One can never be too careful on trash day. Hey, fun. Oh, this stuff is gold, I'll tell ya. Gold. It's hard to get to the bottom. G'day. Right, yeah, good yourself. All right, everyone, I'm ready to dive into my challenge, but before I do, a little bit about my competition. Neil is a YouTuber who runs a channel called Real Terrain Hobbies. And honestly, just by scrolling through his videos, you'll get a sense of how friggin' epic and experienced this guy is. Honestly, just going through his backlog and all of his amazing projects really show that this is someone who knows how to make a diorama. Now the rules are, we're allowed to use anything gotten from a waste bin or anything that is easy to obtain in nature. And we're also allowing common household containers and tools. So things like cups, a sieve, that stuff's fair game. Neil and I are using the same colors, the same tools, the same paints, and all of that has been included in the Mega Minis box. So if you think the process looks fun, go check out the Mega Minis box. I'll link to it in the description. It has over $400 of value for under $200 and further discounted as part of the Ultimate Collection. So I'm confident that I have everything I need to dive into it. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. Before jumping into a diorama or mini, let me just start off by explaining why sawdust is so valuable. You can actually paint sawdust and basically by using a sieve to get rid of all the bigger chunks and ending up with a really fine little batch of sawdust by mixing in some paint and water, you can create your own grass. And this is really, really useful. Not only do you have complete control over the colors and in my case, I made two batches, one of a sort of a more earthy green and another really bright, colorful green for the theme that I was gonna end up going for, but it really Really doesn't use much paint at all and it gives you a huge variety that you can work with it's super realistic and then you want to just get rid of all the moisture you can wear gloves and squeeze it all out and I also like to lay it flat on an oven tray and you can if you want put it in the oven for an hour or so on a low setting and it will dry out really quickly just worth mentioning because as you'll see later this stuff comes in really useful does a really good job and the basing stuff that comes in the mega midis box is extra good as a garnish to really give it that extra premium feel but you don't want to use all of that just as the basing stuff you can get a lot of coverage with some little tricks like this and then use those little packets of basing stuff for the garnish for the really high quality sort of topping. Before getting stuck into a diorama I wanted to make a centerpiece of the place. A miniature me. That's right, Puppets War, the guys who make all the minis in the Mega Minis box, included a head of yours truly. And I can't resist making my diorama build around my own magical world with my own magical self as a part of it. Whoever said I was narcissistic? Because they'd be right. <laughs> the Puppets War minis have a really cool magnet-based attachment system. Now, you don't have to build using these, but I have personally grown to really love them. It makes the outcome a lot of fun. So much so that I actually took it a step further and cut a hole into the neck and the torso of my mini and added tiny magnets so that I could make the head attach with magnets too, with the hope that my final mini would be a completely poseable version of myself. My favorite thing to do with miniatures is customize them, add my own creative spin with a little clipping and sculpting. So instead of just making him a warrior with the included weapons and the Jazzy Striker set, I converted some of the pole weapons into paintbrushes with the help of some toothpicks. And in his other hand, I used the high-tech tablet hand thing, but I cut it and reposed it so it looked more like he's holding a bit of a high-tech palette. That'll be a lot clearer when I paint it later, and when I do, the idea would be that he's a, a bit of a creative warrior, complete with the ultimate brush and palette. Now, with my mini me base coated and set aside, it was time to create the home for little old me, and what better home than a castle? 
And one of the cardboard tubes I wanted to use as a turret was insanely thick. And I actually wondered if the work of trying to cut to it was not gonna be worth the payoff. But as you'll see later, that actually ended up being a bit of a huge blessing in disguise. All right, Neil, it's time for Trash Talk Round 1. Uh, You've taken notes! Oh, I thought we were freestyling! All right, Neil, it's yeah. time. You're going down, and you're, and I'm going to take a dump on your artwork. That sounds really bad. It's really bad. <laughs> it's technically a pun. Jazza, yeah. you're the reason they put instructions on shampoo bottles. Why is that? Oh, because I'm dumb! I'm too dumb yeah. to get it. I'm not so I'm, I'm yeah. impervious okay. to your insult. All right, let's get back to building. Now, I have it coming together, and I'm pretty excited about the direction. Now, one of the sticking points that I'm having that I, I know Neil is probably going to be dealing with too is that the minis box has three brushes, mainly for painting minis. And when doing dios in larger areas, you don't want to use your good brushes, and also they're quite small. But this is the trash challenge, and I can only use things that I've find in the trash. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, I've got a couple of... <laughs> Perfect! I mean, that's all I wanted to do was just uh, paint the inside of this little Listerine bottle so it looks like a big vat. So for this next bit, what I want to do is trace the silhouette of the top of the castle. I wish I had a pencil to trace the outside of the- Oh my god! How convenient! Okay, you get the idea. <laughs> it takes up quite a bit of my foam core, but this is going to be super useful. With the blocking of my castle in place, I set about some of the brick texturing. I remember how I was complaining about how thick the tube was and how hard it was to cut? Well, it turns out it's perfect because it's so thick I could gouge out brick texture with quite a lot of depth. With my turrets carved with bricks and put in place, I just had to texture and detail some of the other key areas around the castle. A cool trick I actually stole from Neil is that you can peel the paper layer off of the foam core and carve directly into the foam to create cool textures. Now this is an awesome trick which I use to create the wooden floor of the tower top. I moved on to some of the foam bricks, both by cutting and stacking them on top with the help of some little toothpick off cuts to keep them in place, and by carving into the larger body blocks of the castle. And that foam core texture trick is super cool. I used it for the wooden doors and the bridge, the stone borders around them, and more. So yeah, thanks Neil. That's, that's a good, good one. That's a good one. Wish I could offer you some tricks that would... I don't know. I don't know. I'm genuinely curious if there's anything in my process that he doesn't know or hasn't used before. Somehow I doubt it. <laughs> now look out joking aside, <laughs> as much as we're uh, trying to trash talk each other for your entertainment, the reality is I respect Neil so much and am so in awe of what he does. If you find yourself as inspired and entertained as I am watching his videos, please consider checking out his Patreon. It's honestly one of those things where $1 a month can actually change someone's life and bring so much back to you in the amount of content and quality and value they can actually bring you. Because this is his passion and he's so good at it and he deserves to be able to do it as much as he wants. So I'm going to link to his Patreon directly in the description of this video. Go check that out and consider supporting him. Anyway, back to the competition. You're going down, Neil. I can't, I can't do it anymore. It's just... My heart's not in it. <laughs> Let's get back to this and have some fun. I moved on to adding details by sculpting with my milliput. The final part of my sculpting entailed upgrading the texture of the moat. By tearing and layering cork, I could make really easy and naturally textured rocky incline and started to put in place some pipes and tubes to bring to life my little tricky concept that's gonna to come together very soon. I wanna make this feel like 
the castle of creativity, dripping with paint. But before I can get to all that stuff, I need to surface all of this and uh, start to bring the color to a place that I want. And I can do both at once. By mixing a little bit of dark paint in with the water and glue, hopefully it'll start that process of doing that undercoat without necessarily using a huge amount of paint. Let's see how far I can stretch this. This worked way better than I hoped. In fact, just that little half bottle of black paint combined with the glue and water completely and thoroughly base coated the whole diorama top to bottom and ready to paint on and move forward to the next stage with. There is a very good reason why this water loo roll and glue trick gets used a lot. In fact, it makes me wonder where I, I got the idea to do the whole thing in the first place. Stick on some strips of either loo roll or ordinary tissue paper. Look at that, there it is. A fantasy castle. Oh sh! Neil did it first. <laughs> so not real terrain hobbies, Neil, but art attack, Neil. Look, I'm happy to steal from both Neils. I don't discriminate. I'll take anyone's great ideas and claim them as my own. <laughs> Let's face it, it makes for a good time. So it's from this point, aside from having a cool foundation, that we're going to turn this into the ultimate creativity castle, crib. Thing. I'd like to say it's the ultimate place for creativity to be nourished and developed, but the truth is uh, that crown probably belongs to Skillshare, sponsor of this video. Skillshare is the ultimate place to learn and develop your creative skills. Are there things that you're already good at or things you really want to try but don't want to do without a little bit of guidance? I've made several classes on Skillshare myself that I'm really proud of and I know offer a lot of value, specifically and most recently on illustration. How to plan, sketch, prepare, develop and ink color and polish your illustration from start to finish. And I even go through some of the class projects that you guys have submitted, give a bit of feedback. It's a really good time. There's a lot there to learn. I know there's a huge amount of value and a lot of people watching this who are going to benefit from it. So go check that out. I'll link to it in the description. There are over 30,000 classes on illustration, design, business, animation, writing, so, so much more. You can check it out today. And in fact, the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. You can explore all of Skillshare's classes to your heart's content, including mine. Check it out with the link in the description and a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now it's time to see how far I can stretch my creativity domain to win. After all, this is a competition. So, Neil, coming for you, buddy. The painting and basing of the diorama is really easily the most fun and makes the biggest difference the most quickly. Now this technique you see me doing on the bricks is called dry brushing. It's another one of those oldie but goodie techniques. You just cover your paintbrush in paint and clean it from most of the paint. And then when you lightly brush over surface areas, it just lightly covers the most protruding areas of your piece, essentially creating some really cool, super quick texturing and lighting. Now I try and brush only in a downwards direction on the vertical wall, so that sort of emulates the direction of the, the sun and light direction, basically only highlighting the upper surfaces and the texture details. And with just a few thin layers of dry brushing all around the castle, as you can see, the whole thing starts popping real quick. Now, with the wood and stone both dry brushed, it started to look a bit samey. So I drenched all the wood areas in the strong tone shading paint, which totally transformed the wooden areas into much more rustic and earthy looking. Now to my favorite bit, for some reason, the basing. It just makes so much of a difference so quick and it's so satisfying. Just cover the ground with a bit of a mix of water, paint and glue and sprinkle ground covering on top. After I've done a whole area, I just give it a light shake to release some of the most unnecessary clumps of ground that aren't in the areas I wanted it to be in and wash, rinse and repeat so to speak. I really wanted the ground to be bright and vibrant and fun, so I slowly added brighter greens layer by layer, ending with a really fine but fairly consistent coat of that vibrant synthetic grass that's in the minis box. And then I sprayed the whole thing with a generous soaking of a mix of water and glue with a touch of dishwashing liquid that sort of helps it all mix and sink in and spread a bit. 
Now, leaving the ground to dry, I moved on to adding the details that would give my diorama the character and style I was after, sculpting blobs of paint with Millie Putt and some tubes carrying the paint around the castle. The idea was essentially to make this building literally bursting at the seams with colour and creativity. My castle was really coming together. So happy with it, so excited complete with its flowing river of paint and after covering all of the areas that were meant to be paint with a bit of a gloss varnish to make it nice and wet looking it was time to move on to the centerpiece of my creative kingdom the king of his creative castle me I have to say, I think there are few experiences I've had in my life as surreal as painting my own head in miniature form. And surreal in the coolest way possible. How I ended up here, I don't know, but I am just so excited and grateful that I get to do cool stuff like this. Thank you for watching my content and supporting endeavors like this, because this is just so much fun. And I'm so, so glad I get to share this fun with you guys. And speaking of sharing stuff with you guys, it is with great pleasure and much excitement that I present to you Mini Me and his ultimate castle of creativity. I've, uh, I've shown my audience my build. One question, did you, when you kind of were deciding on your build, did you kind of like find a whole bunch of trash beforehand and then just figure out what to make with that? So as I'm collecting trash, things are coming to mind. So by the time I had my trash, I'm like, I have these shapes, I have these objects. Shall we start off with, uh, with you, sir? Okay, you ready? What? No! What? <laughs> no! Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm sorry for my language, I'm so sorry. I can't yeah. wait to watch your video where you make it. I am just so blown away. It's worth every ounce of time and ambition you've put into it. That is just too cool. Thanks, man. All right, I guess I've got to show you mine now. <laughs> so this is my mini. I used the opportunity Ooh, nice. to paint yeah. mini me. That's pretty cool, I like that. Okay, well, well here it is. Let's see what you got. This is my creativity castle. Whoa. Dude. So yeah, so I, I kept mine pretty simplistic and cartoony and it just like a li little bit more lighthearted. Yeah. How do you feel yeah. at the end of your ordeal? Cause you really went above and beyond. Pretty proud, proud. Cause I haven't done a, like an urban scene like that before. Like a big city, inner city urban things. Very cool. But uh, I just want to say thanks t to you though. Being on jazz, uh, like th that's a once in a lifetime thing, man. Like your channel's massive. And it just shows, speaks to you and who you are and how awesome and genuine you are as a person. That's so cool, man. I'm really grateful to hear that. Thank you. We're yeah. so bad at trash talking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> I really <laughs> like and respect talking. you, Neil. I like and respect you too, yeah. Jazza. We both lose the trash talk war. I think that's safe to say, but I think we both win the diorama battle. I, totally. I think that's a pretty yeah. safe bet too. Go check out Neil's channel. If you haven't, you're missing out. Link in the description yeah. to his part of this collab. Go subscribe. He's amazing, super talented. And thank you, of course, for watching this video. If you're over here from Neil's channel, welcome and thank you. I may not <laughs> have the experience and prestige that Neil has, but I certainly like to get my hands dirty and I'm becoming pretty obsessed with minis and dioramas myself. There are more videos over there you can check out. Otherwise, until next time, see you later.